My name is Jen Walker Wall. I'm the founder of Work Wonders Careers. I know that 2020 has been an incredibly difficult year, and that's why I'm excited to bring you the stories of our clients who've managed to land jobs during this difficult time. I've interviewed three clients for the series. One is a parent, one has had to pivot her career after her industry was deeply impacted, and one is a former business owner who's transitioned successfully into traditional employment. And they've all landed offers between May and September of 2020. My hope is that you will be inspired by their stories and that you will listen to the lessons that they've learned about what's helped them to be standout candidates even when so many people are actively job seeking. I'm excited for you to hear from our third former client, Mary Liz. Now, Mary Liz is a former successful business owner who decided to transition back into traditional employment. She initiated her job search before 2020, and this year caused her to reevaluate some of her priorities and fine tune her strategy. I'm really excited for you to hear how she approached the negotiation process because I think there's some lessons there that we can all really take away. I look forward to hearing your feedback on this video. Feel free to leave me a note in the comments. Thank you so much, Mary Liz, for joining me today. I'm really excited to hear a little bit more of your story. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. So why don't you begin by sharing a little bit about uh, yourself and your professional interests? Sure. Um, so I'm Mary Liz and I have spent the last eight years in private practice um, as, a, as a marketing consultant for small to mid-sized nonprofits and um, mission-oriented businesses. Uh, and I started that journey sort of as a transition out of a traditional workplace um, to make a pivot in what I was focusing on. Um, and I learned a lot and I worked with a lot of really great organizations and uh, it was a, a great professional experience to work for myself and to teach myself a new skill and industry. Um, but I'm in a different phase of my life now and I just bought a home and I'm looking for a little bit more stability and decided I was ready to go back into a more traditional work environment. Um, for those reasons, and also for more professional growth. I felt like I wasn't growing as much as I wanted to be in private practice anymore. Um, and so I started looking for roles in marketing communications. My specialty has been in social media and digital marketing, um, but I've also played a more generalist role. So I sort of was casting a wide net in terms of those, those positions. Um, but yeah, I would say my professional interest is in storytelling, marketing, communications. Awesome. That's so great. And I, I know that there's actually a good portion of people like of clients that I see who are either kind of freelance or small business owners who do make that transition back into the workplace, which can be tricky uh, for a multitude of reasons. Do you want to share a little bit about like what that search process looked like for you? Because you were happy as a self-employed. Some people are not happy as self-employed people, but you are relatively happy just looking for growth and a shift and something different. So can you share a little bit about what that looked like for you? Yeah. So I took pretty naturally to being self-employed and I liked a lot of the independence and those kinds of things. Um, but that shift started because I really wasn't growing and really wanted to. And I feel like you know, I'm in my mid thirties now and anybody who's been in the same job for eight years in their mid thirties and isn't growing, somebody's going to tell them to like, start looking for a new job. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Who is that um, person? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I started that, that journey on my own and that started with a lot of assessment about, um, what, what that growth was that I wanted. And so that was sort of like what kind of workplace then would I want to be a part of? Um, and I knew it might take me a while to find the right fit and something that would um, be enticing enough uh, to get me to put the independence down because um, there is a lot of freedom and um, in being self-employed that, that worked well for my life. And I liked my clients and I liked the work that I was doing a lot, um, especially in the later years of being self-employed. So it was really um, learning how to research the organizations I was thinking of applying to and um, trying to figure out 
where my skills would be best used, but where I also would have room to grow. Um, so also making a decision about, do I want to try and step into another small organization where I would be uh, like leading a lot and taking on a lot of responsibility? Or did I want to go to something bigger where there's more room for um, growth or mentorship or something like that? Um, so that was, the things that I was weighing as I was like looking to make that turn back into the workplace. Yes. I'm really glad that you talked about um, like that you shared kind of how long the process took um, because I think people can hear that a job search takes for take, feels like it takes forever, no matter what the actual <laughs> length is. It can feel very long for people, but I think people assume that a long job search is like somehow not working or not successful, but actually if you are not that unhappy and are very clear and specific about what you're looking for, the length of time is kind of what gives you success. And even though um, it did take you a while to say yes to an opportunity, you actually walked away from opportunities along the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did, yeah. That's why, you know, that's why I do love like the passive job seeker approach because it works really well for people like you who are curious, eager, motivated, but not feeling like that desperation. And for people who are watching, who are thinking like, oh, this took her a long time. Like you could have said yes sooner, right? Like if your business wasn't working or you were that unhappy, then that calculus of what kind of role you hold out for would have, would have been different. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think you know, when, when I started engaging with you and Work Wonders, the things that I was able to, you know, I had been doing this on my own for a little while, but I engaged with you really sort of at the start of a serious step into this job search and was clear about like what change I wanted to make. But I know that the work that we did helped me understand better how to look at job descriptions, what a reach would be versus not. Um, you know, and, and how to make my skills as a self-employed person match, you know, those bullet points in a job description in a really thoughtful way that would get somebody's attention. And as soon as I started doing that work, I, I mean, I think maybe the first application I sent out in earnest, I ended up as a finalist for that job. And, you know, I enjoyed going through that process um, a lot. And I learned a lot about the organization. Um, and I learned why it wasn't going to be a good fit. There were, you know, there were a couple of like small red flags along the way with the process that I was sort of like weighing and like how big of a deterrent do I think this is? And then when it came down to like looking at an actual offer and what this organization really needed from somebody, it just wasn't going to be a match. Like there wasn't going to be that room for growth. It was going to be me stepping into a leadership role and really having to like take the reins. And if I were in a different place with my job search and looking for like, I want to go in and have a big job and a big leader, like I could have said yes to that. Or if I had been in a position where I really needed a job, which is a totally legitimate place to be in, yes. that would have been an easy yes, because I liked the organization and the mission. Um, but when I really looked at everything I learned over the interview process, it just wasn't going to be the right fit. And there were I don't know, three or four things like that over the course of this job search where something just wasn't the right, it didn't tick enough of the must have boxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me to be able to say, yes, I'm willing to make this big shift. Um, Cause I was putting down things that I liked to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I love that you shared you have a must have list because I think a lot of job seekers are afraid. They just want a job so badly that the must haves um, don't seem relevant or essential, or they're afraid they're not going to get all them. But one of the things I've noticed in these conversations I'm having with people who landed a job during the pandemic is that they, they, they use their focus as a strength of their search, right? So instead of having the search that included all of the jobs, they got really clear on where they thought their skills would be most valuable and also at the intersection of what they wanted to do the most. And that's a real sweet spot. It's not just apply to as many jobs as possible and turn it into a numbers game, but to really think about who's going to value your experience and what are you going to be excited about and what are you going to look for? The other thing you said is, um, you know, how you use that interview process early on to kind of reflect and assess and, and to make a decision. And so many people don't do that. They get to that point and they're like, 
this is it, you know, pick me. Um, and I, it's funny how many people feel like they need to do career exploration before they start a job search. But really, if you look at it through the right perspective, the job search is career exploration. <laughs> like you figure out what it is that you want to be doing by having conversations, by having phone screens, by being a finalist and having a chance to ask a lot of questions. So thanks for letting us behind the scenes on, on what that process looked like for you. You did such a good job kind of unpacking um, some of the shifts you made once we began working together. Was there anything else you wanted to share there or was it, was it really helpful for you to align your, your search with, with roles where you thought you'd bring value, enjoy doing and get traction? I mean, I think the other shift was just in gaining confidence in like in that list in like being able to articulate the things that are of value and important to me and that those are valid and totally acceptable ways to make a decision about a job um and everybody's list looks different and that's also normal and fine <laughs> yeah um yes. like you know so and, and i i mean i think the resume format like is really the thing that sort of opened my eyes too i had been using a really like graphically designed very over formatted kind of resume for these jobs and it's in marketing and so there are reasons to do that but the amount of traction and the ease with which i could customize the resume once the format was simplified and that template was in front of me was like a game changer in terms of being able to read a job description and know how to change the resume in a not exorbitant amount of time yeah yeah um it, it thrills so me to know it is like <laughs> really logistical but it was a big deal for me and it it helped because the search went on for a while it really helped having that to continue to go back to without it feeling like a whole lot of extra work so you know if if you're really going to be choosy that was the other thing like having you say like it's good to be choosy you can be choosy i was like okay good <laughs> i don't I'm not, my expectations aren't like really out of whack from being self-employed. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. I love to hear that the resume made such a difference for you. And actually that's the biggest challenge I think with heavily designed graphic resumes is that the design the design takes away from the space that you have to share some of your qualifications. And it is so cumbersome to customize that people get very attached to the, the design. Um, but it's really the content that, that helps um, it across the board, really, unless you're applying for a lot of design heavy positions. So that's awesome. Thank you for, for taking that resume uh, <laughs> advice to heart. You know, we love that. Um, so a lot of people, and you've touched on this a little bit, but I'm wondering if you can share what this was like for you this year. So many people, Feel like they need to take the first offer. Um, can you share a little bit about how you, you know, how you approached that process this year? Sure. Um, so I think you mean negotiating the offer I ultimately accepted, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think the practice of a number of interview processes and looking at initial offers helped. Um, I think there may only have been one other job where I started a negotiation and even that was just not like the gap was too wide and that mm -hmm. was okay. But for this year, and I think this year also, um, just because of the circumstances, there were some things that I felt like I could ask for that weren't necessarily financial compensation. Um, that seemed like, Things that would be easy for the employer to say yes to under the current circumstances, but six months from now, if it weren't in writing, could have like really not, they could have not followed through on things, things like permanent remote work schedules and extra pay time off or flex time, um, things like that. But I, I guess um, in looking at the initial offer, I was really able to, um, to clearly articulate what my additional value would be to the organization based on what we had talked about in the interview process. And, you know, I was far enough along in an interview process where I had provided work samples and things like that. And so I was really pretty easily able to even go back to that resume format and think in terms of bullet points and just be like, I'm going to add this much extra value. Like, where can we meet? I also had to do a lot of thinking about what is my minimum acceptable salary? Um, 
and it, it, especially in my range, like I had provided them a range and, um, and so then thinking about what were the additional things, if where we were going to meet is at minimum acceptable salary, like what were the additional things that were important to me and what, what's the financial value of those things to me personally? Um, so one of mine was permanent remote work because it'll save me 10 hours a week in the car and thousands of dollars in wear and tear on that car. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yes. Um, but to somebody else, it might just be like, I need to be available to pick up my kids at school every day. And so, you know, that's going to be a time commitment that I need honored. And how do we work on that? Things, things like that. Um, or I, you know, I need a day with zero meetings because I'm in charge of homeschool and it doesn't mean I won't work, you know, like what are those yeah. things that are critical in your house right now. And I think any of those things could have been things I went to with the people I was negotiating with to put in writing um, before I could accept the offer. Um, and, and also looking at the job and like, okay, does, how many of the must have boxes does this tick for me to negotiate? And where am I willing to say, yes, okay, this is the thing, like, this is the right thing. Um, it may not be the perfect thing. <laughs> that was the other thing that I think taking so long with the job search, really, like there is no perfect. It's not that I thought that there was, but um, really being able to like be okay with the fact that there is no perfect and what what that means, um, and thinking ahead in terms of what does this job look like, how long do I want to be here, how long am I accepting this offer for? That was another part of my calculus when I really looked at the whole job and what it would offer me in terms of growth and what I think it's going to be in terms of a potential professional commitment in terms of years to get the growth I want or whatever. Um, like how long can I live with this offer before I'm looking for the next thing? Um, and that trade-off felt useful and worthwhile. Um, and so those are the kinds of things I would think even in earlier offers, like how long do I think I'll be there? How long does this, is this going to be the thing that is my agreement with an employer? Um, is that useful to me? Is that workable for me? Those kinds of things. That's a really great insight. And something that always surprises me when people ask for negotiation advice is like how little sense they have about what they want in the process. Um, and also how much negotiation advice is around salary kind of exclusively so that people don't think about like either the financial benefit or just the quality of life benefit of some of these other things like flex time or work from home or whatever it might be. So I definitely always encourage people to think like, what's the total package here? I mean, there are some companies that pay for all of your healthcare costs and some that pay for very little, <laughs> like that's going to come out of your paycheck one way or another. And so being really aware of sort of the total compensation and what matters to you is so essential to finding something that's the right fit. Because if you're not clear, you can't advocate or negotiate for yourself. Well, this has been so helpful, Mary Liz. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. There's people watching who are going to be inspired to keep their job search going during these difficult times. And I'm just wondering if you have any advice for them, people who are out there wondering if they'll get a great offer like you did. What might you say to them? Oh, yeah, they're out there. I mean, because I also left behind clients who then are going to fill actual employment positions. And those are people that I would recommend people work for. Um, and the job market has changed and it feels hard and job searching can feel overwhelming with everything else that's going on. But there are people who need your skills and, um, and it doesn't mean that you should compromise because we're in the midst of all of this. Um, it might, it might make sense to reassess what your needs are. <laughs> yes. Co-sign <laughs> <And>, that. <laughs> and what is valuable to you. I mean, I think this is a good time to be rethinking those if you were searching before the pandemic started and had a must list, like going back to that and being like, is this still the thing? Because if you're still measuring offers or job descriptions based on a list that doesn't feel up to date, um, that would be an important step. But because uh, there are things that became clear to me even and not so much has worked about my change about my work circumstances, but just the emotional roller coaster of this sort of makes different, you know, you might have different priorities based on everything that's happened in the last year. So, um, but I don't, it, yeah, just keep looking, keep reading the postings, they're out there. Um, and 
and apply for the things that are interesting and go through the process and don't be afraid to say no. Like, you know, it, there are people who need to take jobs and I, that's important. Um, but also if, if you are in a position where you need to take a job, are there jobs out there that will just be jobs while you find a career job that you want? That's okay too. Like, you know, working is working. <laughs> it really is. And I often say to people, like, if you need an income, like if that's motivating your job search, like then that's, that's what makes you picky. And a lot of times, again, people try to get into the numbers game, but one way to keep your salary as high as possible is to, you know, convey as much value as possible and align yourself with roles that are going to, to see value in your experience. So um, thank you so much for taking the time, Mary Liz. This has been great. I'm very excited for you. I feel like I've been on this journey for almost the whole time. So it was very exciting to see this happen for you. And I appreciate you sharing your story today. Thanks so much. Yeah, happy to. I'm glad that I could talk about it. <laughs> are you happy? And how much over? you helped me. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Thanks again, Mary Liz. Thanks, Jen.